Okay, we're ready. I'm going to talk a little bit about math review, which some of you might need, some of you might not, but this will be fairly brief. So let's do this. Okay. So um, in this class, we're going to deal with fairly basic math. So I'm going to start super basic. You all know how to add and subtract. Hopefully you can deal with fractions and big numbers. Multiply and divide. We won't often see that little x used for multiplication except for demonstration purposes. In formulas, it gets confusing because it looks like the letter x. You won't often see this little division sign except sometimes in my own materials like slides and things. You might see a slash to mean divide because that's the computer language way in almost every computer language to indicate division. Um, absolute value is important. It just means the deviation of a number from zero. And it doesn't, it, it's the absolute deviation. It's just how far it is from zero. So if a person is saying, I live, um, you know, 16 miles north of Edinburgh, that's, that's with a sign. That's like maybe a plus or something for north or six miles south of Edinburgh, that might be like a minus six. But if a person just says, I live six miles from Edinburgh, well, the deviation is six. So absolute value, the way it works out, is when you see those little vertical bars, you just, whatever's inside them, after it's been evaluated, if necessary, you just make it positive. So negative 2.5, the absolute value of that is 2.5. The absolute value of this, five minus seven, you evaluate what's inside the, the absolute value signs, which act as parentheses first. And so that ends up being a negative 2. So positive 2 is the answer for that one. The absolute value of 5 minus 7 is positive 2. You need to be able to deal with positive and negative numbers, sometimes getting a little tricky and flipping around. So negative 25 plus 70 is the same as 70 minus 25. That's something you should be able to figure out. Uh, you might be asked sometimes, is something like, is negative 3 greater than negative 2? The answer is, no, it's not, because negative 3 is further to the left on the number line. Greater than and less than just have to do with, with uh, position on the number line, relative position. So greater than means a number is farther to the right, and less than means a number is farther to the left. Now, the absolute value of negative 3 is greater than the absolute value of negative 2. But the real values, the uh, negative value of negative 3, is not greater than negative 2, because negative 3 is further left. So negative 3 is less than negative 2. So let's talk about fractions. You might frequently see addition and subtraction problems with fractions. You can work them out if you see all the numbers with your calculator, but we need to talk about this because formulas have fractions in them. And if you remember the rules for dealing with fractions, then it'll be easier for you to deal with formulas when they have fractions. So 1 half minus 3 fourths, you find some common denominators. So you can turn the 1 half into 2 fourths, which is just another way of writing 1 half. And now that you have two of the same thing, 2 fourths and then 3 fourths, well, 2 of those minus 3 of those is negative 1 of those. So it's negative 1 fourth, which in decimal form is negative 0 0.25 or 0.25. So here's another one, 9 sevenths plus 3. This is an issue where you have um, division and addition, so you should do the division first. Or you can turn the 3 into a common denominator situation. So 21 divided by 7 is the same as 3. So now you have 9 sevenths and 21 sevenths. So you can just take 9 plus 21, because they're both sevenths, which gives you 30. And 28 sevenths is 4. So you can take that 4 out of there, but you still have 2 sevenths left over. So it's 4 and 2 sevenths, which equals 4.29. So 3 and 1 fifth times 5 sixths. This is not 3 times 1 fifth. This is 3 and 1 fifth. 3 and 1 fifth is a number all by itself. It's 15 fifths plus 1 fifth. So there's 3 and 1 fifth here can be rewritten as 15 fifths plus 1 fifth. So 15 fifths is 3, and then the 1 fifth is right here. So 3 plus 1 fifth is 15 fifths plus 1 fifth. So you can say 15 fifths plus 1 fifth, and you have to put in parentheses because that's one number altogether. So we need to deal with that before we do any multiplying by anything else. That times 5 sixths. And the 15 fifths plus 1 fifth could just be 16 fifths. You can just write that that way, add 15 plus 1. And then multiplying fractions, you just multiply across. 16 times 5 is 80. 5 times 6 is 30. If I did that right, let me know if I didn't. Um, which is 8 over 3, which is 2 and 2 thirds, which is 2.67. So here's a, a little bit of an oddball that you see from time to time. It's 3 sevenths over 5 twelfths. That means 3 sevenths divided by 5 twelfths. And if you remember your fraction multiplication rules, you can just turn, take the second number and flip it in half and multiply. So 3 sevenths divided by 5 twelfths is the same as 3 sevenths times 12 over 5. 
So then you just multiply across again. 3 times 12, 7 times 5, 36 over 35, which is 1 and 1 35th, which turns out to be 1.03 if you round off to two decimal places. So let's look at order of operations. Here's a cute little review of those. There's different little mnemonics to remember this. Please excuse my dear Aunt Sally. I love this one because you can imagine you have a nasty Aunt Sally who does socially inappropriate things. Um, you do anything that's in parentheses or anything that's like parentheses first. Then you deal with exponents in the expression. An expression can be one side of an equation or it can just be not an equation. It can just be a bunch of mathematical numbers and operators and variables all strung together. Then you deal with multiplication and division, which are basically the same thing. And then addition and subtraction, which are basically the same thing. Now, if there's any question that this doesn't resolve, then generally you just go left to right in the equation. And sometimes that can be an important thing to remember as well, or you get the wrong answer. So let's evaluate an expression, a bit of a complicated one. So in this expression, there's a lot of stuff going on. But please excuse my dear Aunt Sally. First of all, please, parentheses. Are there any parentheses? Not technically. However, as we'll see later, the stuff on the, the numerator and the stuff on the denominator, being in the numerator kind of acts like being in parentheses. Being in the denominator acts like being in parentheses. Everything being under a radical or square root sign means it's kind of like it's in parentheses too. So um, parentheses, not technically, but we'll have to deal with that. But we do have an ex exponent, 7 squared, and we have another exponent. This radical sign counts as an exponent. It's a power. It's the 1 half power. So um, it's the inverse of the squared. So here we have reducing that. 7 squared becomes 49. And, this, and we deal with this square root. 2 times 18 is 36. The square root of 36 is 6. So this whole thing here becomes a 6. So now this is a little more simplified. Now what do we have? This was simplified. And then this over here. We simplify this stuff here, like parentheses, and we have multiplication, and we have a division. So we need to do all this stuff. Now, you can't do the division until you know what you're dividing by. And so we have to simplify the things in the numerator and denominator first. So this is what we're going to do in the next step. So you end up with 6 plus 49 divided by 3 minus 11. And you divide all that stuff, and you end up with negative 6.875. But it's minus that, so it's minus negative 8.675. And 1.75 times 318 equals this big number, or a small number, 5.565. And so then we have addition and subtraction. But you remember, minus a negative is the same as plus a positive. So when we're done, the answer is 18.44. Solving equations is like resolving expressions, except you have the extra tool of that little equals. It's a little bit of information you know. You know that this side has to equal this side. And you can play with that. You can play with it to help you figure out what's going on. So here's an equation with a single variable. I know it says x twice, but there's just an x. There's not a y. There's not a z. So one of the things we frequently do when we're solving an equation is get rid of, um, try and consolidate the loose numbers on, on one side and the numbers that are attached to variables on the other side. So let's get rid of these loose numbers. Let's subtract negative or subtract 19 from both sides, which, of course, will cancel this out. So now this 19 minus 19 is 0. 26 minus 19 is 7, is 7 there. So now we have this equation 3x plus 0 equals 7 plus 7x. We can get rid of the 0 because plus 0 doesn't mean anything. It just means you might as well get rid of it. 3x is 7 plus 7x. We'd still like to have all of these numbers on one side and everything with an x on the other side consolidated like that. So we can subtract 7x from both sides. You know, I could have done this a little more easily. Um, which would give us, this works nicely though. Uh, so 7x minus 7x is 0. It doesn't matter, we don't, we don't know what x is, but we know that 7 of it minus 7 of it will give us 0. So you don't have to know what x is to do that. Uh, hang on just a second. Picking up where we left off, we end up with negative 4x equals 7 plus 0. So plus 0 is nothing, so negative 4x equals 7. So we can subtract 4x from both, or 4 from both, or sorry, <laughs> let me go back. We can divide each side by 4, because we know that negative 4x divided by 4, that's going to just make a 1 there, which disappears, essentially. So let's go up here to continue on the same page. Negative 4 divided by negative 4 is the same as negative 1 divided by negative 1. Anything divided by itself is just 1. So um, 
we can just take that and make that 1x. We can take that and make it x, because x means just 1x. So if, if you say, I have a car, a person doesn't have to say, how many cars do you have? I have one car. There. I said a car. So that's what x is like. And notice what would happen here. 7 divided by negative 4 is the same as negative 7 divided by 4. This is the math going along with this. 7 divided by negative 4 is the same as negative 1 times 7 divided by 4. Anyway, so x is negative 7 fourths, um, which is negative 1 and 3 fourths, which is the same as just negative 1.75. So I hope you can be able to follow and work through that example. Here's um, inequalities. Inequalities are something not a lot of people have had much fun with, but we need to deal with them for confidence intervals when we do statistics. So if we say this inequality here, 5 less than x less than 27, we can read that. x is greater than 5 and 27 is greater than x, or you could say 5 is less than x and x is less than 27. You can say that a lot of different ways. But you need to break that down into what's actually going on. What is x here? We know two things about x. x has two relationships, one relationship here with 5 and one relationship with 27. Its relationship with 5 is that it is greater than 5, but it does not include 5. But we also have to keep in mind that at the same time, it is less than 27, not including 27. So if we have a number line with a 5 and 27 on them, x is everything in between. So it's 5.000000 infinity 1 up through 26.99999 infinity. So it's, it's 5 to 27 not including either number. So here's a different one. We have y on the outside of the inequalities. So we have one number on the inside, and the variable is listed on the outside. And this is a way of saying that the variable is two ranges of numbers, usually. So y is less than 12, and 12 is less than y. So y is all the numbers that are less than 12, not including 12, and greater than 12, not including 12. So it's just one number on the number line. And why is everything except 12? Why is everything except the exact point of 12? Now, if we're dealing with integers, whole numbers, then it's all the whole numbers except 12. But if we're just dealing with continuous numbers, then it's, it's everything except this super teeny point, this infinitely small point of 12. So here's another example. x is greater than or equal to negative 2 and less than or equal to 2. So x is all the numbers that are greater than negative 2, including 2, or sorry, greater than negative 2, including negative 2 this time, and less than negative 2, but including, or sorry, less than 2, positive 2, but including 2. So if we put those two numbers on the number line, x just includes them. It's similar to the first example, but it includes both numbers this time. All right, that's all I'm going to say for math review, and we're done.